Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School. I'm glad that you are with us this morning on this very special day, uh, Baptism Day. Uh, so happy that you're here. A uh, special welcome to those of you who are watching with us online uh, as well. You might be watching this live or maybe later on. Either way, we're glad you're here. Uh, for you, there's a little link uh, to the post you're watching this on that you can so you can download our bulletin. Uh, there's also a little online connection card. We'd love for you to fill that out uh, and let us know that you're with us this morning. If you're here in person, uh, those connection cards are right there in front of you in your pew. They look like this. Uh, this one is for your contact information. This one's for your prayer requests. If you're here for like the first or second time and haven't gotten one yet, uh, we'd love for you to visit uh, Sarah uh, out in uh, our Gosnell Hall, which is our lobby out there. We got a little gift for you, a present for you, uh, for coming to church today. So see her to get that on your way out. Uh, all the announcements for the week are right here in your bulletin. I want to tell you about a couple of things really quickly before we get going. Uh, first thing is, uh, after church today, uh, I'm going to have a little listening session <coughs> an informational meeting about a pilgrimage trip we intend to take to England next year. Uh, about this time of year next year, maybe March or April of 25, uh, I'm going to lead a trip over to Oxford and Canterbury and London, uh, where we will trace the history of the roots of our Anglican uh, faith, uh, and we'll also see some beautiful things along the way. Uh, so if you're interested in that, joining us, uh, stick around after church, meet me in the parish hall, or we'll have a quick little meeting. I'm interested in knowing how many folks might be interested in the trip as well, so come see us after church. Uh, second thing is, on Saturday, if you look here, uh, I'm really excited about this event we're having from 10 a.m. to 2 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Colin Cornell, who's a professor of Bible and Mission at Fuller Theological Seminary, is coming uh, to St. Thomas next weekend, and uh, he's going to be uh, leading a seminar on, uh, on eco-theology. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there about, uh, I don't know, climate change and global warming and the stewardship of the earth, and there's a lot of people that tell you what you ought to believe about this or that. Uh, why don't you come on Saturday and listen to one of the smartest minds, uh, theological minds in the world today on this topic, and then make up your own mind, and you can talk about it with us. I uh, really love for you to join us. If you want to come, all you got to do, just uh, it would help us a lot if you'd fill out a uh, connection card and just say Eco Theology or the Saturday Seminar or something like that. And um, let us know you're coming so we can have lunch for you because we'll provide lunch as well. Uh, so hope to see you there. Uh, I'll let you read the rest of the announcements for the week uh, in your bulletin. Friends, I'm really glad you're here. Our worship service will begin after a brief moment of quiet. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Will you stand, please, and join us in our opening hymn found on page three.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in us, all to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, come up here and see me at my step. If you're a kid and you want to come up, come and see me at my step. Come and see me at my step. Come and see me at my step. Nice. Very cool. All right, all right, all right, all right. How we doing, how we doing, how we doing, how we doing, how we doing? Hey, how was your week this week? Was it mm or um or um? Mm, mm, mm. We had some down. Sorry for the down weeks. Glad to see the up weeks. Well, I had a pretty good uh, week this week. I've been, I had a cough all week this week. Yeah, yeah. Cough, a cough. Daddy, that's good? Daddy. No, it was kind of, I, I kind of had a, this sort of a week this week. Yeah, or this. Yeah, which is why I've got deep voice. But anyway, <laughs> one of the best things about my week is, uh, and I don't think I've mentioned this to you before. Hello, up here. Do I have, hello? Hello? Okay. Uh, is, uh, did you know that I've got uh, a, a little dog at home? Have I told you about this, yes. my dog? His name is my dog is, my dog is Winston. Brown he's about this big and he's brown and white and he loves to take a walk. And so Winston and I, we were out walking in our, in our neighborhood and we came across, across this, uh, uh, little girl. And I don't know, she didn't, she didn't seem like she was having a very good day. She was standing underneath the tree, and she was going like this. <sighs> there was this girl named Frouty, and every time I see her, she's, you know, Howdy. it's Pouty Frouty. And I said, hey, Frouty, you look kind of Exactly. And I said, what's going on? She goes, I have started volleyball. Mm. I do volleyball. I love volleyball too. And I said, well, why are you pouting about volleyball? And she goes, I can't do it. Yeah. <coughs> I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, I'm on my volleyball team and you have to know how to serve the volleyball, which means I have to hit the ball over the net. And I tried it and it didn't work. So I'm no good at it. Mm. And I said, did you try again? And she goes, no, I'm terrible. I'll always be terrible. And that's the end of it. Mm. I said, did your coach try and tell you what to do? She goes, yeah, but my coach doesn't know what he's talking about. Plus, he's never seen a girl as bad as me as volleyball. Mm. And I said, well, you know, you should keep trying. trying. You shouldn't give up after the first time. time. Just try again. And she goes, I don't know, but it's true. We all face things that sometimes can be hard. And do we have to be perfect the very first time we ever try anything? No. no. What I like to think is a great term I like to use called take a step, take a step. Say that. Take a step, take a step. Take a step, take a step. Just try. Just go do a little thing right the first time, and then you do another thing right the second time. You just take a baby step and a baby step, and pretty soon you're down the road. And it's also true with our walk with God. Do you know everything about God you're going to know five years from now? No. no. Or ten years, years from now? From now. Or when you're 110 years old like me? No. You're not 110. You're 110. I didn't know you were 110. I'm half of 110. So you're 50 or 55. 55. That's how old I am. Might as well be 110. Anyway, so I want to share that with you guys in case you ever get discouraged or you're trying something hard. Just take a step, take a step. Keep trying. Uh, let's pray. 
Dear Jesus, we love you and thank you that you call us to do hard things. And we can do hard things because we have you in our lives. And so, Lord, whenever we get frustrated or upset, uh, when things aren't going our way, uh, just remind us of that, that you love us and that you're there for us, especially when we fail. Uh, Lord, we love you and we thank you for forgiving us. And we thank you that you're always there to help us uh, every day, no matter what. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Fabuloso. Would you like to follow Mrs. Ferris? Mrs. <coughs> Page. Page, she's going to be there too today? Awesome. <coughs> Great. Well, hi. How are you? I like them. They look good on you. It's very nice. Yeah, I like it. Oh, cool. As they go, we'll hear our first reading. A reading from Acts. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murder given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world did not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we, what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. 
All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. While the disciples were telling how they had seen Jesus risen from the dead, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me and the laws of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in, the, in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord.
Friends, my sermon this morning is called Take a Step, Take a Step. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd just like to have a seat. Well, it's another terrific Sunday at St. Thomas. Today is the 15th Sunday of the year, and we are about to perform our 17th baptism of the year. Yeah. What a wonderful thing. Uh, We just love admitting people, especially little children, into the household of God. And I invite you to join me in praying that they will never know a day when the church wasn't there for them. Hmm? May they never know a day feeling like they are outside of the love of God and the fellowship of the church. Uh, We're baptizing children, as you'll see, that are, are at different little stages in their development. I love it when the child is at the age where they're just beginning to walk. Remember that? When the lightning fast mobility of crawling gives way to the confidence of standing up on their own two little feet. You know, they take a step and fall. They take two steps and fall. They take 10 steps and then fall. Take a step, take a step. You know, those are good words to live by, especially when you're uh, you're facing a big, complicated situation, like Pouty Friday was learning how to serve at volleyball. How do you get from where you are to where you want to be? Take a step, take a step. It's good for your spiritual life as well. How can we become more like Jesus, following him closer, And with more integrity, say it with me, take a step, take a step. Consider the little children that we baptize today. That's how God sees us, I think. As his children, still learning, still trying, all in the need of just putting one foot in front of the other. Consider with me three types of Christians. First, the person who believes in Jesus but is frustrated with how they are living and their understanding of the faith. You believe, but you've decided that God really isn't that big of a fan of yours, so you work at it sometimes, hoping to earn his approval. In fact, that's probably why you're at church today, hoping to earn God's approval. We'll call you the strivers. Good morning. Second, The person who believes, but has pretty much given up trying to grow in their faith. You are here, you go through the motions, but whatever you're going to know about Jesus or whatever you're gonna do for Jesus, you already know it and you've already done it. We'll call you the sitters. Going on, sitters, not much. Third, the people that realize you are a work in progress but are readily accepting the grace of God in your life. You believe in and are looking out for God's redemptive and sanctifying work in your life and you've decided that you're gonna follow him, take a step, take a step. You're my favorite sort of Christian. We'll call you the steppers. Hello, steppers. Whether you are a striver or a sitter, the sermon is for you. Now, if you're a stepper, God bless you, you're going to really enjoy these next, I don't know, 45 minutes or so. Just kidding. (laughs) Look with me at our reading from 1 John. It's on the bottom of page 5 and the top of page 6. Start at the bottom of page (coughs) 5. Here, we can find help for the strivers, you people who are feeling unworthy and trying to earn your salvation, and for the sitters. You who need some help getting up to start walking toward a closer walk with Christ. Let's find out how we can accept adoption, connect belief to behavior, and stop striving and start abiding. First, accept adoption. Look at verse 1 with me. John writes, See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Look, I am my Father's son. Joe Mickey's son. Is there anything that can change this? 
Even though my dad has died, I am still his son, his child. As strong as that bond is, the bond of our relationship as children to our heavenly father is even stronger. Look at verse 1 again. I think a better word than see is behold. Behold, stand in awe and wonder that the love of the Father is so strong toward us that we should be called the children of God. The Holy Spirit witnesses to our spirits, as it says in Romans, that we are the adopted children of God. Paul calls it the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. Tell it to your soul this morning so that the Holy Spirit can affirm it in your heart. Tell yourself, I am the beloved child of God. Do you believe this? Good, seven of you believe this. Do you believe this? You are the beloved child of God. Holy Spirit says yes. That voice instead that comes to condemn, to tell you that you've fallen short, to tell the strivers you gotta keep striving, to tell the sinners, the sitters to stay put, that voice is not from God, my friend. The Holy Spirit, the one departed today at baptism, affirms your adoption. But I don't measure up. I don't deserve to be called that. Well, exactly. Look at verse two. We are God's children when? Now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. Look, none of us are perfect. As John pointed out in chapter one, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Nevertheless, the Father extends his love to us through the Son at his cross and resurrection and expressed in our hearts and minds by the Holy Spirit that witness with our spirit that we are his. And notice how John lifts up the hope of our resurrection to eternal life in verses two and three. When Jesus is revealed, he says, when he comes again, we will be like him. <clears throat> we will have resurrected bodies just like Jesus does. And that body will be immortal, not mortal, fit for the realities of heaven, not the limitations of this broken world. We will see him as he is, John says. Our mortal bodies, friends, will flower like a seed that has fallen into the ground and dies. And when the trumpet sounds with our own eyes, we will see him. This is the hope that we have and live in. Verse four says that since we have this hope, we ought to purify ourselves now. Go ahead and start being like Jesus right now. Don't wait. In other words, take a step, take a step. It starts, though, with accepting adoption. Adoption, you see, leads to regeneration, becoming spiritually alive. Regeneration leads to sanctification, the Holy Spirit working on us from the inside out to make us more like Jesus. And sanctification is finished with glorification, when who we will be in eternity in all its perfection, glory, and beauty will be revealed at last. Accept adoption. Having this hope, I tell you, it will change your life. Second, connect belief to behavior. Verse four is kind of a bummer on the surface. Look at that with me. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Well, whoops. You sitters, you really love that verse. The sitters will say, see, I told you, I'm toast. I'm spiritual roadkill on the highway of life. If John really felt like everyone who sinned was lawless and helpless, he wouldn't have written this to us. Instead, what he's saying is, now that you've accepted adoption, the next step is to connect your belief to your behavior. The Greek word used in verse four suggest habitual sinning, continuing the practice of sin. In other words, really grasping, my friend, the hope of eternal life and being a child of God will absolutely change your attitude toward sin. 
continuing a pattern of sin in your life willfully and consistently denies, do you see, who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Look at verse 5. You know that what he was, you know that he was revealed to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Talking about Jesus here. You sitters need to hear this. Because you say, you know what, it doesn't matter how I live. Jesus has forgiven me of everything. I'll do better in seven other areas of my life, but this one over here, my favorite one, I'll just keep on doing it because it's covered in the blood. God knows I'm this way. Strivers will hear this and beat themselves up and take it as proof that they just need to work harder. But please understand what John is actually saying. We have been adopted by grace. And since we are headed for glory, we can connect our hope, our belief to our behavior now. Not because we need to earn anything, but because as we walk in that grace, we are continually forgiven and empowered by the, by the Holy Spirit to be like Christ as we step forward in obedience to him. In other words, take a step, take a step. Here's the third and final step in John's great progression. Once you have accepted adoption, you connect belief to behavior, again, taking a step, and you're walking in grace and power, then a wonderful new way of life opens up to you. You can stop striving and start abiding. You are no longer a striver or a sitter. You become a stepper, stepping forward, listen, from a position of abiding in Christ, not imposing and sitting lead to exasperation. It keeps you from feeling the love, the grace, the forgiveness, and the power of Jesus. Listen to me. There isn't anything that you need to do. Believe in Jesus and just receive this love. Accept adoption. The whole point of Jesus coming and dying again, verse 5, is because we've fallen short. That exasperation will inevitably lead to practicing sin. <clears throat> just settling into patterns in your life of jealousy, anger, lust, greed, selfishness those things in your life that you haven't given Jesus any access to. So let's close with a positive look at verse six. No one who abides in him sins. If we don't wanna sin, then what should we do then? Just abide. Remember what Jesus said, abide in me as I abide in you. I am the vine, you are the branches. So what does a branch need to do to stay in a vine? Nothing, just abide. Abiding, do you see, is different than sitting. Abiding is the intentional resting of the spirit, right? The squashing down of the self and our desires. Just stop and rest and abide and trust that what we need will come from God. Like a branch knows that what it's need what it needs will come from the vine. Stop striving and start abiding. It's like scooching over from walking in darkness into walking in the light. It's saying, I believe and I trust in you, Lord. It isn't me, but what you can do through me. It isn't you, God, it's, it's not me, God, it's you. And when you get in your heart and your soul to this place, then like a little child stepping up on their feet, you can take a step. It's how in verse seven, we can do what is righteous just as he is righteous. Not striving or sitting, but stepping. Friends, accept your adoption. Connect your belief to your behavior and go from striving to abiding. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called the children of God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Uh, the candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. Want to invite uh, the candidates, their parents, and godparents to come on up.
to start this project. Great. Good looking group. What do you think? Yeah, it's terrific. Uh, I'll come around uh, to you. I guess I'll start this way to this. You have your bulletin in front of you, and as I come, uh, make your presentation. Here we go. Say we present. Excellent. Hi. Next. To receive the sacrament of nice. And who do we have here? Nice. Do you want to be baptized? You do? Hey, by the way, Chloe, do you want to be baptized? Thanks. Great. And last but not least. She's sleeping so soundly, too. Well, let me ask, uh, yes. <laughs> let me ask this question of you, the uh, parents and godparents. Uh, will you, by your prayers and witness, help these children to grow into the full stature of Christ? So? Okay, we're in the middle of page eight. You got me? Like, look right here, you see? Okay, let me start again. Will you be responsible for seeing the child you present as brought up in the Christian faith and life? Say, I will. There you go. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? <clears throat> Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? To you, the congregation here present, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Yeah. And would you please stand? Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. <coughs> Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Then let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. We commit to your mercy all who have died, no, that your will, no, no, no. Okay. 
Okay. Never mind. Keep going. Your, your turn. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship all those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Christ Jesus, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Would you like to have a seat? All right. Will you let me hold you? Can I hold you? Hi, I got you. Or not. Okay. I'm just going to pour this little water over your head. Ready, Gracie? Gracie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, I know, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here, here, here. Chloe, I believe in you, kid. I got you. Step right up. Can you lean your head over a little bit for me? Chloe, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very nice. Come on. Will you let me hold you? Great. Cody, my man. All right, ready, pal? Here we go. Cody, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nice. You let me hold you? Pray, uh, my friend. Hi, sure. I'm right over here, okay? Pray, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I know. Amen. All right, Gavin, you can step on the step, right, pal? Say yes. My man, thank you. There you go. Mommy, can I hold your hand? Yeah. Lean over just like that, pal. Gavin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Don't do it. <laughs> Valerie agrees. Yeah. 
I got you. She got you. <laughs> Valeria, I baptize you, hi, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these, your servants, the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an acquiring and a discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, and a spirit to love and know you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Hold on, man, I've got a hold on to you. <laughs> Valeria, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, okay, I guess I'll give her up. Do you want to start at the other end? <laughs> Gracie, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Um, Amen. Chloe. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Um, Cody, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Gavin. Gavin, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Freya. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Friends, let us welcome the newly baptized and say together, we receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Would you please stand? The peace of the Lord be always with you. And blow out your... To have a seat. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries we could celebrate today? Birthday, anniversary, come on up. <coughs> Excellent. Let's uh, pray for these birthdays, shall we? Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. Well, as if we don't have enough going on today, yes, yeah, stay as you are. I want to invite uh, our Daughters of the King chapter uh, to come forward, we have the very great pleasure of uh, inducting a new member into the Order of the Daughters of the King. So, ah, excellent, thank you. <coughs> come on up. This.
Big day for Stephanie. Great, who's our uh, presider? Great. Me. Okay, great, start us <laughs> off. It is my privilege to present Stephanie Keller as candidate for membership in the Order of the Daughters of the King. We are gathered here in the sight of God to, in this congregation to accept, to admit this woman into the Order of the Daughters of the King. We commend her to your earnest prayers that she may have grace to fulfill the, application, the obligations of the Order and that her labors may be to the glory of God and to the welfare of all his people. Stephanie, the Daughters of the King is an order for women whose mission is the extension of Christ's kingdom, especially among women and girls, through prayer, service, and evangelism. Do you desire to become a member of the Order of the Daughters of the King? Do you promise to obey faithfully the two rules of the order, the rule of prayer and the rule of service, to offer your support to the clergy for the good of the parish and the extension of Christ's kingdom, to wear faithfully the cross of the order, and to work for its purposes as God may give you the opportunity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I receive and admit you as a member of the Order of the Daughters of the King. To, this, to the congregation, will you support this woman in her ministry of prayer and service? If so, say, we will. We will. Bless, O Lord, this cross and grant to your servant now admitted into this order such an abundance of your grace that she may wear the sacred symbol in the spirit of humility and with devotion to the service of the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Accept and wear faithfully the cross of the order, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, take up your cross and follow me. Daughters together. O eternal Father, you have sent us your Son to teach us things pertaining to your heavenly kingdom. Give your blessing to our order, wherever we may be in our world. Grant that we, your daughters, ever may discern your truth and bear the cross through the battles of our earthly life. Give us strength to overcome temptation and the grace to work to spread your kingdom and to gather your scattered sheep. May your love, O oh Lord, help the daughters live lives of love, and may your holiness lead them to be examples of virtue, that they, strengthened by your Holy Spirit, may pray and serve you all their days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, Stephanie. Let's Yay. welcome her as a member of the daughters. Friends, ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night in which he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food of drink, and you an unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. serve the Lord.